Perfect. Wait for your signal, as they say. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Commsverse. Today we're starting session 325, Customer Video Experience Journey, with uh, Nicholas Ramon Starberg and Stefan Kostassen. Uh, guys, can you give us a quick uh, chat about your session, and I'll leave it over to you. Absolutely, absolutely. I can start here. Hi, everyone. This is Niklas Roman Starberg. I'm the VP of Customer Success here at Hive Streaming. Stefan? Uh, thanks, Niklas. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Stefan Gustafsson, working as a VP of Delivery, uh, taking care of our, all our project delivery and also our support here at Hive Streaming. Perfect, perfect. And uh, I think just to set the stage for the session today, what we wanted to um, go through with you all today is really to discuss a little bit and share some insights of the challenges that companies can run into when starting to use live video to really drive employee engagement in their organization. So we wanted to share a couple of findings, what we normally see, uh, and a couple of key challenges that people might run into. So really excited to be here. Um, to start this off, obviously, we wanted to just say uh, thanks to all the uh, the nice sponsors here. It's great that Hive Streaming is obviously one of them as well. Um, you can see it's a fantastic event, minding the, the circumstances to be able to move everything virtually and use Teams Live event for this session. Um, to kickstart things, all right. So for those of you who might be familiar with Hive, this might not be news, but just to set the stage for everyone else who might not know what who Hive Streaming is. So Hive Streaming is uh, one of the leading uh, enterprise video experience platforms out there, helping companies with the delivery of large scale video, uh, providing analytic services and also uh, tools for optimizing uh, the experience, uh, you know, especially when people are working in the office, you know, there's might be limitations when it comes to bandwidth and uh, stuff like that. And especially when people are working from home, there might be challenges when it comes to network stability. So it's a lot of challenges out there to deliver live video, and it's really important that uh, people succeed with this one. So that's to set the stage and give everyone a background to why we are presenting this one as well today. Now, to start things off, I think it's important to understand the background to why video became so important in the enterprise. And kickstarting this one by talking a little bit about the background. I mean, I think that we can all agree on that we are currently in the midst of a massive change. Um, we Digital transformation has been around for the last 10 years, and it's a buzzword that everyone is talking about. And I think that all enterprises out there is really engaged in trying to come out on the winning side of the digital transformation. Uh, we're now seeing where, you know, we have gone from having a kind of regional comp uh, competition to everything being very global. Um, we're also seeing a big workplace disruption these days. Um, obviously, with COVID-19 hitting us, it's no, uh, it's nothing new to anyone that it's been a challenge for many people trying to manage, like mitigate uh, moving from having everyone in the office to allowing people to work from home. And more importantly as well, when we talk about workplace disruption, I think it's an important thing to mention that the demographic shift that we're seeing in the market is also important when trying to thinking about employee engagement and why it's important to incorporate video in this one as well. Um, I saw some uh, research paper actually, and going into 2020, we can see now that millennials is for the first time the highest percentage of the active workforce. And I think that this, uh, it, it poses a couple of challenges and opportunities at the both, uh, both at the same time, uh, because we also see that new demographics also require uh, a purpose to feel engaged at work and not just going there for a paycheck. And I think that that is something that is really important and why leadership really need to care. Um, Looking at it as well from a climate change point of view and the ongoing pandemic, uh, obviously this is also part of a big transformation. Uh, there's one thing, what how you know how do we manage the situation as it is, and there is another thing, what happens afterwards. How are we going to make sure that we come out on the winning side in this transformation? Now. Normally, when talking about workplace disruption, there are two things that we see as key things that most customers that we engage with are talking about. Uh, everyone is trying to engage in what we call a transformative leadership. And uh, rather than it being this kind of like old hierarchical uh, you know, uh, organization where everything is pretty much just top down and uh, a culture where 
mainly management has been part of where the company is going and then people carry out the task. We're seeing a big change in this one where leadership is really keen on engaging everyone, all teams, every employee in the transformation. And I think that part of this one as well, by one of the one of the things that everyone needs to do is as well to really embrace technology because without embracing technology and you know that facilitate this kind of uh, this kind of leadership as well, it's going to be very very impossible to engage the workforce to the degree where it's necessary today. And I wanted to share um, a couple of numbers here, actually. I don't know, you pro some of you might be familiar with these numbers, but um, this is taken directly from one of the largest uh, studies that were done on employee engagement by Gallup. I think it was published back in 2017, uh, and it was State of the Global Workplace. So Gallup did a study where they interviewed and asked people working for Fortune 500 companies to see who is actually, you know, who is actually engaged in their jobs? And looking at these numbers, if we start from the left, if we see that only 15% of the total that was interviewed in this one actually, you know, agreed and said that we are actually engaged at work, that's a very, very low number. Because if you translate it on the other way around, that means that you have 85% of the workforce in massive companies that normally don't feel that they are engaged with their jobs and feel they don't feel part of the of the mission that the company is on. And more importantly, continuing under, if you look at the other one, it's quite concerning to see that we have so many employees out there that feel actively disengaged uh, from, the, from the company's mission. And uh, looking as well on the final number, the 7% that, you know, uh, asking if Fortune 500 companies feel that they're good at retaining high performers, it's something that I that that has started to really, uh, you know, to to really decrease. Seven percent of the of the Fortune 500 companies only feel that they are good at keeping uh, their high performers. Um, on the other hand, as well, when they compared these two uh, groups and they started to look at, you know, those companies in within the Fortune 500 segments where employees felt that they were really engaged at work, uh, comparing this with the peers within the Fortune 500 segment, there was as much as up to 20% in difference when it comes to the sales numbers for the company. So it's not in active sales, but actually looking at, you know, in comparison to the size of the company. And I think it's quite interesting to look at these numbers because we can translate this one to if we have an engaged workforce, every company will be able to become more productive, more creative, which will indirectly lead to better sales and better profit. Stefan, maybe you want to take over on this one and actually talk a little bit more about video and the challenges that people come to and what people normally come to ask for and the questions they ask. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Nicholas. And I want to first say just, I mean, those those numbers that you're showing here, they're, no, they're remarkable and it's, it's really what we always need to keep in mind here. Uh, when, when you know, striving for, for the better, uh, striving for improvement. Um, I want to start here uh, just to to first say that, um, I mean, we're Hive is very fortunate. We're working with some of the <clears throat> some of the you know, largest uh, companies and organizations out there. So we speak to them, to them on a daily basis, and and I want to start with this quote here uh, that is really reflecting, you know, the message or or the request or challenge and need that that many of the organizations uh, put out there uh, when when we start to speak to them, and uh, and uh, so there is a, there is of course a challenge. Um, well, there is a challenge around the the, uh, the li running. Uh, live uh, events at scale, and I think uh, the change now that we're doing the digital transformation, going from what we used to have, uh, where we gathered up in in conference rooms to save the bandwidth, uh, moving that over to to run these events in an online environment, in a virtual environment, you know, where we can avoid to have uh, all travel, uh, all the traveling for people, you know, coming and going on site for 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 workshops and other things i mean that that's 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 a great transformation that is going on but it will it will lead to a lot of challenges and it will lead to us realizing where we are and i want to say on the on this side when it comes to traveling i mean consider today all the costs that's all companies out there i'm pretty sure all of you listening in i mean realize that your your company is probably saving a lot of a lot of money due to the the traveling that has now you no know, uh, really been is now reduced uh, due to partially due to COVID, but as we all probably start to realize, the COVID is probably here to stay to some extent. I mean, at least how we are working. Uh, hopefully, the COVID itself is going away. Um, but um, knowing that now we can 
you know, uh, we'll utilize video, video communication instead in a different way. Well, it means that we need to uh, be on top here um, uh, and we need to, uh, yeah, understand our challenges um, and, we'll, and so we can embrace um, the on the new video adoption. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Journey. And and Stefan, to uh, to add to this one, then now could you please walk us through the top three challenges that companies normally see when embarking on their on their adoption journey of starting to use live video? What are the things that companies really need to think of in terms of challenges? Yeah, ab absolutely. So yeah, three things here I would like to to bring up uh, today. And um, the first really it's about you know understanding your environment, understanding the situation you are currently in now that. Uh, I mean, most of your most of your companies uh, today, you're probably already on the video adoption journey. You're already just probably been in a few uh, video events. Some have come further further than others, um, but it's very important uh, to understand where you are to basically get the visibility on what limitations there might be or what the capacity uh, might be. Uh, and here I'm talking about the entire chain, both from the production all the way through the CDN onto your network and down to the end user device. Without knowing that, well, how can you measure where you are? How can and how can you know where you're going tomorrow? Uh, and I think you, here we need, if we're thinking of this from a network perspective, there are a lot of things happening um, or many components involved. Um, and there's also, you need to consider stability as well. Uh, but think about it from a regional perspective. A network is is not you know is not you is not global a global setting or, or topology. It, it's changing. It's different in every region. You might have to consider uh, how are you no know, on-site viewers versus remote um, you know um, uh, participating in events and impact and getting impacted by by the network. Uh, are there maybe potential you no know, technical mm, bottlenecks to deliver the video? Uh, today we all have some sort of endpoint security um, deployed on our devices. On the network there might be inspection services running. All these can can definitely interfere with um, with your live events. And here you need to get on top to understand uh, what's where you are. Additionally, I want to add here that there's also the aspects of the of the experience, uh, the experience outcomes. Um, all your viewers out there, they are probably attending events every day, um, listening in. And here we need to you know, get, collect the data and understand what is their experience? Um, what is their experience in different regions and in relation to each other? Um, are they consuming high quality stream? Are they consuming a, a no? Are they at a high bit rate for the stream? Do they experience buffering? How long are they viewing for? How many did attend? There are, there are tons of questions out there. And it's really the, the key message here is really that you need to get on top, collect that data, use you know, analytics tool to understand where you are today so you can also plan your journey on where you want to go tomorrow. Um, second point, it's it's about then preparing and ensuring that that you are you know, in, a, in a good state for running your events. And there are you no, know, this comes down to tools and it's also comes down to activities. It's about uh, proactively basically uh, setting, you know, setting the stage or, or, or preparing for, for your next uh, big uh, town hall event or large, uh, large uh, live event. Uh, and here we need to realize that uh, a network as an environment is not is not static. Um, there, there are constant changes. It, it's um, consider uh, hardware components first of all. Um, they might get replaced, upgraded to to newer version. Uh, could that interfere with any traffic going on on, on that network? What about uh, yeah? We also I also already mentioned some of the you know security um, services that might be running a network. They constantly change. There are, there are there are newer services, smarter services out there that suddenly you will need to adopt or introduce in your organization. Um, so uh, it's important here to realize that again it's changing. Also from a network topology, you know, you will create new subnets or, or network changes um, as well. They would also you also need to consider the routing of your traffic. Um, as you know these days um, when working from home we have uh, we're all looking into maybe uh, the routing of traffic using VPNs and split tunneling. Uh, 
um, again, that to some companies is a resolution to a lot of problems, but for some it's also a concern. And here you need to again get on top and and uh, you know uh, make the adjustments needed so you can again secure your event. Yet another point uh, uh, or aspect that I want to bring forward here is the the uh, the bandwidth capacity or 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 the stability of the network. Again, we there are a lot of organizations today. They have they don't have you no know, the, the full capacity for for running events, and this is where ECDNs, uh, SDN solutions a lot like Hive is maybe coming is also uh, help, can help out. Um, it's it's about understanding. I mean, you need to realize where what the capacity is here um, and what the stability is, so you so you're not jeopardizing the execution of the event itself, because you don't want to risk to overload the network. Uh, and again, at the very end of the day, well, if the user is is experiencing buffering um, or cannot actually consume the uh, the video at a high bit rate, well, it's reducing the the overall quality. And as as uh, well, we'll be talking about that shortly. But there is a definitely a connection between that experience and the reach of your of a, of a video content message. So, yeah. I'll, Nicholas, I will stop here. Um, Please, uh, yeah, I'll leave it back to you. But these are definitely some of the challenges that every organization need to consider when, yeah, when, uh, yeah, embarking on this uh, video adoption journey. Absolutely, absolutely. That's that was that was very good points there, Stefan. And I think that from a, what we call it technical readiness, those are obviously like three main takeaways that I think that every organization needs to really consider. Um, we talked about this session like when setting the stage about talking about a video adoption journey and sometimes talking about video adoption journey it might sound very fluffy and a little bit abstract to actually understand but normally what we talk about when we discuss this with our customers and what we can see from analyzing data on a daily basis is normally when people start the journey is when they come to to their conclusion that they need to start engaging at least doing all hands on online right utilizing virtual uh, tools to be able to deliver this and if we think about a video journey starting from the left to the right this is normally what it would look like so you have companies who start with running large all hands, maybe once a quarter. Sometimes they might run, you know, yearly results. Uh, they might share financials with the with with the entire company. But it's something that is more sporadic rather than having like a high frequency. Um, an interesting thing that happens from a cultural thing that we can see that once companies and the CEO start to really engage in running these all hands, we start to see how this spreads like a wildfire to other parts of the organization. So going from just having one and the same host, we start going from having the Excel sized events to go adding the large events. And this might be, for example, a chief product officer in a company that wants to share uh, news with the rest of the employees on how things are going on the product side. Uh, you might be in financial services, which is one of the more transformational ones when it comes to delivering digital services. There is a release of an app that you want to inform your employees about because you want to have them on board. Or you might be a CFO that wants to share the news about how are the financial results going, how is COVID-19 impacting the business and so on. And uh, this is something that we start seeing that it goes from just being one host to involving multiple people at the C level. At this stage, when we're talking about the really large ones and the, the Excel sized events, um, I think that the, the frequency and the size uh, the frequency and the amount of events is normally not as high. So I wouldn't call this as being very mature in terms of adoption of video. Where it really starts to take off is what we call about the mid-sized events. And this is where you might have regional managers or office, you know, someone who's responsible for a particular business unit or a function of some kind where you start having a critical mass of people that starts to have more frequent meetings and it can add up to weekly meetings in this case it can be someone who wants to say let's uh, you know if you're a global company you might have a regional director for emea and then you might have a country manager for each one of them this is normally the mid-sized events where people start engaging hundreds of people rather than thousands maybe and those happen at more higher frequency uh, because rather than sending out uh, emails for example example, making informing how the company is progressing. You might want to share the news using a live video because we know that live video is more engaging content than just doing it uh, over email. Uh, 
And what's really interesting, and I actually call this like the pinnacle of video adoption journey, and that's actually when you start to engage everyone, like from the single team lead to an individual player or employee in a within a team to start hosting their live events. And this is where you start going from just having the weekly ones to having daily ones. And we're not talking about having a one uh, one live event per day. We're talking about sometimes even seeing hundreds of live events a day or sometimes even thousands of live events per day. And an interesting thing, I had a conversation actually, uh, was yesterday evening, so this is something very fresh. Um, I had a conversation with a US-based company, I'm not going to disclose anyone's name, uh, but it's one of the largest technology companies in the world. And I really appreciate what they said because they have been focusing on driving their company and really focusing on what they call video adoption and measuring this one, that they moved away from sending any updates company-wise on email and instead recording it directly from the CEO, sharing a two minute video or a five minute video as a VOD asset so that people can consume it directly from uh, from from the platform that they were using. And it, it's really engaging to see because they're uh, and I asked a question and I said here like the, the, I'm not going to mention his name, but uh, I asked him a question. I said, I'm curious to understand how come that you, you made this decision? Was there any data to back this up? And uh, the answer was quite clear. It was the fact that if you look at the bounce rate, if you send out an email in the entire company, the bounce rate of an email is much higher and the longevity of, the, of, uh, of an email is very short. And you're not going to see a long term effect where people are going to go back and read it or engage with it. On the other hand, with the video, if you spend 10 minutes recording something that is very personal and sharing an update, it's more personal and it has higher engagement and higher viewership. Of course, it makes sense from a return on investment of making sure that you share these things in a more personal way and video is really really the pinnacle of facilitating this thing Nicholas, and if i if i can chime in here i want to i want to basically glad i mean we're, we're reviewing we're working with uh, the customers as one that you gave an example of uh, and speaking to them on a daily basis and helping them to analyze also their insights uh the, all the data they collect from their events and i think it's 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 very it's obvious when we would if we would compare different organizations and where they're on this journey we can clearly see in all this data that is collected the difference is how long how long they they've come in this adoption i mean when it's down to when they're running you know smaller broadcast events setting that up uh, and also how they manage to reach out what's the viewing time if it's close to to being you no know, uh, if it's close in in the average is close to to the the length duration of the event and so on so it's it's interesting that this really ref, it's reflected in all the yeah, uh, an analysis reports that that we today are are reviewing. Absolutely, absolutely, no, definitely, and it's uh, it's it's interesting that companies are actually starting to talk about video adoption as a serious thing because it's it's not about just adding a piece of technology. It's by the end of the day, it's if we break it down, we talk a lot of times about collaboration. And I think that one of the fundamental elements of collaboration has to do with communication. But unless you facilitate teams to be able to set the stage and leaders to be able to set a strategic tone and voice of where the company is going, how are we possibly going to be able to facilitate the collaboration unless we communicate with everyone? And by doing this one as well, referring back to uh, the points that Stefan covered off earlier, the importance of, of quality. So um, there was a research paper, and I think it was quite interesting. Some of these numbers are directly taken from our own big data, big data analysis. Some of them are from a research paper made by Intel Labs together with a fantastic analytics company called Conviva. And uh, there were some students involved from UC Berkeley University as well. Um, but they published a paper called Understanding the Impact of Video Quality on User Engagement. And what they looked at here is to start seeing that once you have bit rates that go below 500 kilobits per second, this normally results in shorter viewing time. And we can translate shorting viewing time into lower engagement because think about it. Let's say that you're going to run an all hands and that all hands is running for one hour. And all of a sudden you start seeing that after 30 minutes, everyone that had a lower quality stream starts to have a significant higher drop off rate after 30 minutes. Obviously, they're not going to be participating in entire messaging from senior leadership. So it's really, really important to care about not being you know, just compliant and, and be happy just making sure that you get no buffering, but make sure you get the highest bit rates as possible. 
but when when it comes to buffering, we all know that this is something that we we no longer expect. Expect, um, you know, by the end of the day, we're all consumers on our spare time, and we all have a Netflix account where we go in and watch, you know, our, our favorite series or our favorite movies. And I think Netflix is really setting a new standard on the quality that we're expecting. So when we change from being a private person and going back to work uh, or, or engaging in a live event there, we expect the quality to be, you know, similar. And unless we can provide this from a buffer ratio and uh, in terms of a quality on the stream, that's going to have a negative impact on employee engagement. And the positive side of this one, however, is quite interesting. So we did uh, we did some analysis and I analyzed this is a snapshot of, or a sample of a couple of hundred events um, and which we did a big data analysis on. And we compared the ones who didn't have any buffering and the ones who actually managed to pull a 1.7 megabit uh, stream, for example. And it's interesting to see that most of these people actually have, you know, watched the entire video. Of course, you're never going to get 100 percent. There's always someone who needs to leave. There is always someone who cannot watch the entire session or someone who came late but it's really interesting to see that there's a clear, clear relationship between the quality that you deliver of the video and the outcome of the experience and uh, yeah by this this being said i think it's yeah it's it's it really really puts things in perspective why it's important to care about how you deliver the video uh, what are the challenges you need to you, you need to address in your organization and more importantly as well why do we need to bother about talking about the video adoption journey for our company uh, yeah nicholas and i, I want to add there i think that's well all of you listening in here today, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm very sure that you're again, your your companies, you're already on the video adoption journey and it's the the threshold for getting started, you know, uh, is, is not that big. I mean, you have already a platform probably of choice selected today and it's a matter of taking that now to the next step and realizing where you are, uh, what the limitations might be uh, and really then set the stage for, you no know, for the events coming up. Um, so, and then connect, linking this to what Niklas, what you just shared, Niklas, about engagement, which at the end of the day is, you know, you need to have a strong communication and get that message out there. So, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. And it's and it's really encouraging. We see like um, once you start getting to the, I'm just going to go back to this one. We have one minute before Q&A session starts, but it's interesting to see the companies who are normally on to the, to the further, farther right side on this one. Um, they normally come to us and they ask us as well. They said, like, how can we take this to the next level? Like, we want to provide a Netflix experience for all of our employees. And I think that that's, for me, that's, I love hearing that one. I just feel like this is a company taking video very seriously. They don't want to just be good enough. They really want to start working with external encoders to provide, you know, a higher quality stream for everyone. Because they believe that, you know, the high granularity that you can provide, there is something to the media richness that when people are seeing a face, when people are seeing expressions happen, that is really taking things to the next level. And I think that that's really when you can start talking about replacing a physical meeting and moving it virtually. So really, really excited to see when when companies, you know, really push the organization to go all the way to the right side. That was pretty much it for the session to set the stage for uh, video adoption journey. Um, we are now open for a 15 minute Q&A session and then obviously open for other breakout sessions in case anyone wants to take a one on one. OK, well, we don't have any questions in the queue at the moment, so does, uh, does anyone have any questions for Nicholas or Stefan? Otherwise, uh, gents, was there anything else you wanted to talk about during a couple of your couple of minutes while we wait for those questions, or did you just want to move to the breakout session? Stefan, you want to add something? I mean, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of things we could be adding and talking about here today. Um, I mean, uh, I mean, maybe we will be getting a bit off topic, but uh, again, um, my, my, uh, if I may just you know, summarize it yet one more time and add, I mean, it's really no. I, 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 embrace, I encourage you know our customers or people that I speak to to you know make the homework, understand what you need. I mean, it's a, once you realize what you can achieve with, with the smart and efficient video communication, and how that is you no know, is uh, impacting you know the, the the. Uh, 
spreading the cultural you know, empowerment, uh, helping the organizations to build an identity, all that. I mean, that's great. That's just lovely to see. And, and every time you know, we help analyze events uh, that our customers are running that are successful. I mean, it, it's so it's especially when we had when we can see that oh, no, this event compared to another one had much higher uh, well, know, good, great performance across the globe in different regions on different networks. We're seeing um, you know, great bit rates uh, across most viewers and we're seeing you know, a long viewing time and all that. I mean, that's just fantastic. So it's, uh, it's so clear when you see someone who is not prepared uh, versus also someone who is, who is on that journey, who is in putting in place and who trying to learning about how things work in the entire chain again for, from the production video production platform uh, down to the uh, end user actually consuming 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 that stream. So uh, no, it's I just want to encourage everyone to 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 learn about uh, you know, what tools and, and services are out there that can help you to to facilitate and, and ensure uh, that's that perfect performance we say um, experience uh, of, of video distribution and video consumption. I don't know, Nicholas, any, any, anything from your end uh, or if there are any other questions James raised? There's nothing else sitting in the queue, I'm afraid. So um, I think uh, and unless anything else pops up, I think we might move on to the breakout session. OK, perfect. I'll just post the details for that. Um, so you do, if you did enjoy this session, don't forget to take a minute, only takes a minute to fill in the survey. Um, presenters like this put a lot of effort and time into making sessions like this. It's time out of their day. So uh, they appreciate even that one person that says, yeah, this session was really enjoyable. So fill in the survey, give them the feedback that they need. It makes it better for, for you, everyone next time. Um, otherwise, come join us in the breakout session and we're happy to have a chat. Thank you everyone for listening in. Thank you everyone.